Heaven's California. Hey guys, today I'm going to be reacting to another video by Mr. Nightmare. Um, it's called Three Disturbing Postmates Slash DoorDash Stories. And I was kind of thinking, what? So when I saw it, I looked it up. And it's basically like food delivery apps, so it should be good because yesterday, me and, well, I ordered pizza yesterday. And the pizza came around like 11-ish. So like I assumed there was probably, there's probably a lot of stories kind of like about food delivery and everything and like, you know, stuff like that. So I'm kind of thinking this would be a good one. Um, it's about 16 minutes long, of course. I'm once again doing a little video before work. Oh no, don't, 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 don't start yet. So it's just under 16 minutes and I have work in just a bit over an hour, but I still gotta get, get ready, change and everything. So yeah, I just gotta get my shit together, but I wanna just, you know, get this recorded just so I can upload it later. Plus, I love Mr. Nightmare videos, don't we all? So I just want to get into this like right away. And I'm hungry now too, but <laughs> let's just get into this. This should be good. Mr. Nightmare does not upload all, often at all, like once a month or once every few weeks. So I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Especially like food delivery, like I love that. Let's for a go. very brief two months, I worked as a delivery driver for the app DoorDash. DoorDash. It was to make some quick money on the side on the weekends. Yeah. I live in a suburb of Nevada, so deliveries are usually quick and close. Someone made a big order to a local burger joint, and I accepted the delivery. When the food was finished, I loaded it into my car and checked the destination on the app. It was a house across town in a cul-de-sac. I tended to drive quickly over the speed limit to get more deliveries out, aka get more money. When you drive like me, though, you're bound to get into some trouble once in a while. And this time... As I was driving up the block towards the cul-de-sac, I saw the sickening glow of the blue and red lights in my rear view mirror. Yeah, that's what I was kind of thinking, a cop. I pulled to the side and got ridden a ticket for more money than I'd possibly even make that night. It was a horrible feeling that I'd spent my night doing deliveries only to end up losing money. Still, I had to finish this delivery, albeit a bit late now. After the cop got back in his car, I drove right down towards the cul-de-sac. What's a cold aside? I got to the house, ran towards the front door, and knocked really hard since there was apparently no doorbell. Hmm. As I waited for the door to open, I looked around this dark cul-de-sac. I say dark because there weren't any street lights. Only the small amount of light that was given off by the three total houses sitting on the street. It was a pretty unusual dead end. I, Not a I nice wouldn't go there. spot by any means. I wouldn't go there. The house wasn't exactly the prettiest either. The door finally opened, and an average height bald guy opened the door. He had a grayish beard with brown stains in the middle. His body language and way of behaving was immediately weird, screaming drunk or a drug addict. To top it off, his breath was awful as he said, how you doing, in his loud, obnoxious voice. How you doing? <laughs> he told me to come in. No. I told him, no, it's okay, as I held out his bag of food, waiting for him to grab it so oh, I yeah, could Oh come leave. inside. No. He said, no, no, come in, I got something for you. No. I told him, really, it's okay, I need to be on my way. Yeah. He said something along the lines of not being able to tip me through the app, so he'd have to give me some cash money. Okay, well then go get it, I'll I stay here. my better judgment. I entered the house with his food still in my hand. I heard a car pulling up into the cul-de-sac as I stepped inside. As soon as I cleared the door, the man slammed it shut and told me to follow him to the kitchen. No. And to put the food on the table. No. For some reason, even as uncomfortable as this guy made me, I followed him into his disgusting, messy, smelly kitchen. He went into his basement and told me to wait there in the kitchen. He shut the door and I heard him stomping down his steps. I stood there feeling awkward, but also nervous. There was a short silence and I stood there looking at my phone, texting a couple friends about what I was experiencing currently. Suddenly there was a huge crash from down in the basement. It sounded like a big shelf holding a bunch of smaller items toppling over, followed by what was a scream for help. It seemed as though the man was hurt by whatever had fallen down. No, no, it's a setup. It's a setup. I ran to the do basement it. door and opened it. Don't do to it. To my surprise, looked down to see nothing but darkness. Don't go down Not there. Not a single light was on. You're gonna get. Oh. I called down into the basement. You okay? I heard the man moaning in apparent pain in the darkness below. That's sad. I asked where the light switch was. Instead, he just kept saying, help. I used the flashlight on my Samsung to start I, I can almost guarantee this is a setup. Stairs. This is a setup. As I got maybe halfway down, 
the man's moaning sound stopped and there it was you completely go. silent. Yeah, there you go. I stopped as I realized how silent it had grown yep. and asked if he was still okay. There was no response. Get out. Suddenly, I got a really bad feeling in my gut. Yeah, get out. Something wasn't right. Yeah, get out. I heard a small cracking sound from in front of the steps, like a pebble being crushed against a concrete floor. Then, there was a loud knocking at the front door upstairs. I turned and ran upstairs to open it, and it was the cop who had pulled me over about five minutes ago. What? He was holding something familiar, two folded pieces of paper paper clipped together, asking me if it was mine. It was, and I grabbed it from him. But I also told him in obvious distress that I thought something strange was going on with this man who I just delivered food to. I told him it sounded like he got injured downstairs, but that it also seemed suspicious. I showed the cop to the basement door, and with his hand on his holster, he called down into the basement. I told him there wasn't a light switch. So he took out his flashlight and started walking down the stairs slowly. Yeah, he has a gun. At the top so. of the stairs as he progressed to the bottom step then disappeared from my view. I didn't wait too long before hearing a commotion downstairs. The cops seemed to be yelling in response to being attacked. The commotion ended with a gunshot. <laughs> then there were cries of pain, genuine cries this time. The cop called up to me to come help him get the guy upstairs. He asked me to hold the flashlight as he guided the man who was now cuffed up the stairs. All the while he was screaming in pain and at the cop. The cop brought him outside and called for an ambulance on his radio. He wanted me to stick around to sign a witness statement. I stuck around for about half an hour before I left and went home. Who would have thought the same cop who wrote me a ticket would potentially save my life 10 minutes later? That's crazy. Shit. Uh, it's still like bizarre and everything. Oh, by the way, I looked up what a cul-de-sac is and it says a street or passage closed at one end. Oh, that's creepy. Nope. I occasionally do some deliveries for Postmates. Usually late at night after work during the week or on The weekends. worst time to do it. The worst time. I use my motorcycle as it allows me to get from point A to point B faster. Fair enough. I was delivering some Mexican food to a guy named Ron. It was a 15 minute drive from the burrito place to Ron's address. Okay. When I got to the listed address, I brought the food up the long driveway and up to the front door. I rang the bell and an older woman opened the door. I said delivery for Ronnie. But the woman looked confused and said, there's no Ronnie here. Oh, God. I apologized and said I had the wrong house. So I went back to my bike and double-checked the app, making sure I was at the right house. And according to the app, I was. The house number was 15, just like listed on the app. I figured it was time to call this Ron guy to figure out if he had made a mistake with the address. Yeah. I used the call feature on the app, but after one ring, it went to voicemail. So I tried texting instead, and within Sus. seconds, he replied back. Saying? I told him the address he gave me was wrong, and he swiftly said, yeah, sorry about that. He uh -huh. explained that he didn't actually live here, but that he was chilling with his friend in the preserve across the street from the house listed on the delivery. Uh -huh. He requested I come into the nature preserve by the fire and drop it off there. He mentioned he was sorry about this and was planning on leaving a generous tip. One time before, I did have someone request I drop off their food at a park near their house. So at that moment, it didn't seem like the strangest thing in the world. That's kind of weird. It was just a slight inconvenience, but one that he'd apparently make up for with the tip. The preserve was gated, but there happened to be an opening leading into it right across the street from the house. I followed the dirt trail until the light post ended, and any further I would be walking into complete darkness. I looked around for the light of the fire. As a matter of fact, I did see a hint of light coming from the woods. I started making my way over into the, the increasing darkness of the Do woods, not go in the woods, leaving the lit up area. As I got closer, I could confirm <sighs> it was light from a fire. Why were they in the middle of the woods, though? Yeah. And the question of why they were expecting me to bring it to them out there started to ring in my head. It's a setup. I Are yelled out Ron's name a few times when I was within yelling distance of the fire. No answer. When I got close cool down here. I noticed something. What? There was no one sitting around that campfire. Oh, God. Get I asked out. myself, was that the right fire? Just to get out. But that was a silly question. How many fires could there be on a weeknight in the preserve? Fair enough. Just I get walked out. a little closer to the fire. No, I noticed do it. a tent behind it. Maybe they were in there. Don't so go to the tent. Again, I yelled Ron's name as I approached the tent. 
It was zipped up. I tapped on the tent and said Ron's name again. So I finally unzipped the tent and knelt down to look inside. Oh, God. I saw someone laying down on their stomach, facing away from me, so that their shoes were only a few inches from my face. They seemed to be asleep. This was getting a bit ridiculous, so I just marked the order as delivered and turned ready to walk away. I didn't even make it a single step and before was I there. someone standing about 20 feet from me, between yep. two big trees. Told ya. He called out, are you alone? No, I said. My friend is just over there. The guy asked, why aren't you alone? I said, I do my deliveries with a partner. He asked, where's Smart. my food? Smart. Smart. I was about to tell him I was in the tent. When I felt two hands grab both my legs and tried pulling me down. Oh my god. I looked down and saw the arms reaching out from the tent. Ron, presumably the guy who I was just talking to, started charging at me. With only maybe five seconds to act, I did manage to escape the grasp of the two hands and run past Ron. Oh, awesome. If that was even his real name. I don't think he chased me after I left the vicinity of the fire. I found my way back to the bike easily, and I drove off without taking a second to look back. I contacted Postmates customer service about it. They told me I should escalate it to the police, as there was nothing they could do. By the time they even responded with that, I didn't even feel up to going through with a police report. I just figured I'd let it go. I got lucky, and I was unharmed. Still, it yeah, but someone else may not be so lucky. If your instinct tells you to turn and walk away, turn and don't. walk away. Yeah, like all these are obvious setups. Like, don't just say I've done. I didn't feel safe. Like, you have a right to refuse if it's not safe. That's obviously not safe. For some reason, I never really used any of those food delivery apps until recently. I only After used Pizza Pizza. That's all I use. One night after a late work shift, I didn't have time to make dinner, so I ordered some Chinese food off Postmates. Fair enough. It was originally estimated to be delivered in half an hour, but I waited a lot longer than that. Around the 45 minute mark is when I started getting impatient. I called the Postmate driver, and he picked up after a few rings. I asked him where he was. He asked, who is this? I said, Tracy, the girl he was delivering food for. There was a short silence. Then he said, oh yes, I'm on my way. So I thanked him and hung up. Uh -huh. I sat in my living room with the TV on and basically just played around on my phone, dying for the Postmates driver to just show up already. Just then my phone started vibrating and knowing that it was likely the Postmates driver calling me, I felt very relieved that the food was probably here at last. Yeah. I picked up and waited for him to say something. I had to say hello like four times before he finally started speaking. Hello? He said he's outside. I didn't really know how to respond to that, so I said okay and then described my house to him. Then he said something weird. He asked me to come outside to get the food. I opened my front door to check if he was there. That's he sus. Wasn't. That's sus. I asked him where he was as I stepped out onto the front deck. There was another pause. I Bring a knife around with my you. whole front yard and didn't see anyone. Bring a knife with you. Where I told him I didn't see him. He said, I see you. Again, I didn't know how to respond. But the way he said it was just so creepy. Oh my god. The last thing he said before I hung up the phone was, You look really pretty. Give me my food At and leave. At that point, I went inside and slammed my door shut and locked it. I opened the Postmates app and it said my food was delivered. I didn't know what was going on here, but I was growing increasingly uncomfortable. And angry, probably. I shut off all the lights in my house and started looking out each window. I started with the living room windows. Didn't see anyone. Then I checked the dining room windows. Nothing. Next, the kitchen. Still no one. So I went down to our den, which was by the back door. I hadn't raised the curtain that morning because of work, so I pulled the string to raise it up. And? Only a little bit. Just enough to peek under to check the backyard. And someone was there? This whole time I was looking out windows. I don't think I actually expected to see someone. But when I looked under the curtain to the den window, I saw a man sitting in my back patio. He wasn't on his phone, he wasn't doing anything. He was just sitting there, as if he were waiting for me. What are you doing? I lowered the curtain back down, and then my phone rang. It was the guy again picked up, and he immediately said, I just saw you at the window. All 
I said to him was I'm calling the cops and I hung up. I went back to the living room and called the cops. Okay. The man on the phone said an officer would be over shortly. Shortly. After I hung up, my phone kept ringing. There was the man. I kept rejecting his calls, but he wouldn't stop. Like, I'm fired. Jesus, what the hell? Sitting there waiting for the cops was one of the most tense moments of my life. Eventually, there was a knock at the door, followed by a man shouting, Police. Is it, is it the actual police? I jumped though? off the couch and ran to open the door. I was confused. <coughs> Not a man in a police uniform, but some man in some dirty street clothes who gave a disturbing smile as soon as we oh made eye contact. God. He opened the storm door and tried to get in, but I pushed the front door hard enough to get it shut and lock it. He didn't bang on the door, he didn't scream anything. I think he simply ran off after that. Bitch. A few minutes later, the actual police showed up, and they searched the property with me. We found the man's phone left on the table in the backyard. Good. The background to the phone was a white guy with a blonde girl, presumably his girlfriend. I note this because the man who was on my stoop was not white, he was Hispanic. Oh. I did a little detective work with the cops and came to the conclusion that this man was not originally my Postmates driver, that he had stolen the driver's phone somehow mid-delivery. Oh, shit. The police confiscated the phone and left and after that, taking And that's why he was late then. As far as I know, that man never returned to my house. But this was easily the scariest experience of my life. Not gonna lie, that was a good video. That was, that, that was a really good video. But this is what I mean with like food delivery apps. Like if there's anything suspicious, like if the instructions, because like when you order on Pizza Pizza, which I do, not too, too, too often the past two times, it was actually quite, you know, close together, but you know, it's like, I don't know, the guy, like he rings the doorbell and then I turn the light on in the room that, you know, in the room, just in that, like, in like the corridor room and then on the outside, just so we can see outside. And then, uh, I give him money, that's it. Like, I don't, it's not sus or anything. Like, I don't make it so, like, you know, like, why the hell would you even do that? I like, just gave my, like, eyes saw my food. Like, you know what I mean? Like, why do you, and, that, and the last one's actually not really scary, though, because, like, if you stole the actual delivery, like, things thing, because it's like, what the hell? Like, I just saw my food. You know what I mean? Like, I just saw my food. Like, you just expected to order just to get food, right? Like, I, I wouldn't, I, I ordered yesterday just expecting food, and then I just got food. Like, it wasn't any, anything crazy. Like, to have anything other than that, like, you know what I mean? It's just, to have any of these, like, scary experiences, it's like, what the hell? I just gave me my food, please, I'm hungry, I'm starving, just give me my food. Like, bro, like, what are you doing? Like, I don't know, but that was, that was definitely a good video. And it, and I, I don't relate, but, I mean, like, I can obviously, you know, see why it's scary, because obviously you go up to some random house, you're in the doorbell. But, like, that, that same delivery guy has, has come to our house a few times, so, like, he knows that we're kind of somewhat, somewhat regulars. Not totally, because, like, a regular is kind of like every day, or kind of, like, every, you know, so often. But we we don't we we don't do it that often, and plus he probably hates me because I always pay him in change. <laughs> I gave him like forty three dollars in change yesterday. He probably hates me. Anyway, but yeah, like a delivering food is probably scary. I would not want to do it, especially at nighttime, especially at one two in the morning when it's like creepy. You know, kind of getting on your car. It's like you know going to the house. It's like are they gonna answer? Are they gonna be suspicious? Are they gonna be stupid? Are they gonna try to play a prank on me and scare the crap out of me? Like what are they gonna do? You know what I mean? It's just scary. It's like because you don't know what you're really expecting. Or like you don't know what you're really gonna get, get yourself into. Anyway, I gotta go go to work soon. I gotta eat and I gotta do some stuff still. So I'll see you guys in the next video. I'll upload this later. Yeah, good video. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.